PeteTools.com. G'day guys, Pete from Pete's Tools here to annoy you again. Hey, what I'm going on about today guys, is if you're trying to cut like the maximum thickness these little plasma cutters can cut, how the air that's going into it will affect your cut. Because it makes a huge difference guys. If you're using the right amount of air, you can cut this sort of stuff. And if you're not using the right amount of air guys, it can buggy your consumables really, really quick and get you really, really frustrated with your plasma cutting and then you might say to yourself, well, I'm going to throw this machine away because it's a piece of junk. Anyway, guys, that's what I'm going on about today. Same as usual, like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, and let's get into it, eh? <laughs> so as you know by now, guys, if you've watched any of my videos, I've got quite a few of these plasma cutters now. I try and buy one every two or three weeks if my budget will let me. So let's decide which one I'm going to use for this experiment. I think we're going to use the flame weld one here. Good middle of the road plasma cutter, 50 amp, seems to do what it's supposed to do. Cheap as well, $199 or $210 or something like that. So we'll use this one and we'll see what we can cut with what air pressure we need to do it. So what we'll be cutting guys is about 12 millimeter here or about half inch, just a little bit over half inch. I think half inch is about 13 millimeter or something like that. But I'm a metric boy like I keep saying. And the air pressure that we use makes a huge difference how long your consumables last and how much you can actually cut through the thing. Because if you don't have enough air pressure, then what you're going to do is you'll burn out your consumables really, really quick. And also, what will happen is because you're not cutting all the way through, you'll get all the shit blowing back up into your torch, which will increase your consumable burn even more. So what I'm trying to say is we need to have enough air pressure to spew all that plasma out the bottom while we try and cut it. And this is about the maximum this little machine can cut. So we'll see how we go, eh? I think we'll start with about 80 PSI. So if I turn this machine around, guys, and we'll set it up to 80 PSI. So if we have a look here, guys, I think we've got it set to about 60 PSI already. So I'll increase it to 80 PSI because we're trying to cut that really thick steel. So if we just turn them up, about 80 PSI is about the maximum that I've got available on my compressor. So what are we, 80 PSI here. And they recommend not to run them any more than about 90 PSI, but I think if I had some more air, I'd try and pump a little bit more into it. Because you're going to get a longer life out of air consumables as well. So we've got 80 PSI guys, and we'll run it at 50 amps. And we'll put our post time, our post flow time, at about three seconds. And if you don't know what post flow time is, that's the amount of time that the air continues on out of your torch after you let go of the button. So what it does is it cools down your consumables, so it makes them last a bit longer. Well, that's the theory anyway. But I wouldn't try cutting this thickness with anything less than like 80 PSI. But we'll do one at 80, and then I'll do one at 50, and I'll show you what happens. Right there guys, let's try and cut this beast. Yeah! 80 PSI. Look at that guys, straight through, not a problemo, yeah! And what I'll do guys is I'll go and put some bloody gloves on and show you. See, we're look at this guys. That's pretty bloody good cutting for a little machine like this. And shit, that's hot Pete, yowza, yowza, yowza. Pete burned his hand, <laughs> That even went through the gloves there guys, hey? Not stupid enough to pick it up with my bare hands though. <laughs> as you can see guys, I cut halfway into the table here as well. 
So not only cut through this 12 mil, it cut through the bloody top of the table as well. I have to get a hammer and knock it off. There you go. <laughs> Look at this. Cut through the top of the table. And a cut through this is not too bad at all, guys. As you can see, guys, there's bugger all slag. There's a little bit here, but that might be more because I tried to cut the top of the table as well at the same time. But that's at 80 PSI. Now, if I do the same thing at 50 PSI, you watch what happens. And I won't cut the table this time. So we'll move it over a little bit like so. In case you're wondering how I'm cutting it, guys, there's a gap between the edge of my table and the runner here. What I do is I cut in the gap so all the shit blows under the table and sets my feet on fire normally. <laughs> so guys, now what we'll do is we'll change it back to 50, like I said before. So we'll turn it down to 50 PSI. Right there, guys, is 50 PSI. Now watch what happens now, fellas. Righty, 80, Coyote, 50 PSI. Now I don't know if you noticed guys how much more this was glowing red, especially on this end. So we've lowered the air pressure. Shit, that's hot. Smoky, smoking, smoking. The gloves are smoking. So we've lowered the air pressure and you see like, oh, oh, wee. Oh, starting to set myself on fire guys. <laughs> we've lowered the air pressure and you noticed before when I did it, it just fell off, it cut off. But if we turn it over guys, See what it's done to the back of it like this? It's not got enough air to blow it through and what it's also doing is buggering your consumables because like I said to you before, it's blowing all the shit back up into your torch because it can't escape. So the difference of 30 PSI goes from quite a clean cut to this rubbish here. So you imagine if you dropped it like another 10 PSI and you're trying to cut this thick steel like that, you're almost instantly bugging your consumables. So that's why you've got to have the right amount of air for the thickness you're trying to cut. Like if I was cutting this, which is 4 mil, I think, about 4.5 mil, the thing could cut this all day on 50 PSI. You could probably cut this on 30 PSI. But the trouble is, like I said to you before, the thicker you go, the more air you need to blow through it. So guys, that's the difference here. You go from cuts like this to cuts that look like this with 30 PSI difference. And that can make all the difference when you're first starting out plasma cutting because if you're running your wrong ear on your machine and you're trying to cut something and it gets you all pissed off and then you don't like it and then you chuck your machine away you'll say no this is crap I'll go back to an angle grinder or something just watch the air supply guys because it makes a huge difference but you guys are probably not cutting anything this thick anyway you're probably only doing four or five mil and you can like I said you can basically run that on 35 or 40 psi not a problem anyway guys enough bullshit from me today that's still hot. <laughs> I burnt myself three times on this video, guys. <laughs> Same as usual, if you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. This is probably my favourite machine so far. If you want to see a review on that, I'll put a link either side there. And uh, go and have a look at that if you're interested. 
I've got another couple of reviews coming up for another machines. I've just brought them. They should be here within a couple of weeks because remember I'm in New Zealand and we'll uh, stick them online and we'll see if we can find something better than this machine. Anyway guys, see you later. Bye. PeachTools.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.